What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and today I have a super exciting review for you, something that we have never seen in stores on shelves before, something that shoots harder than any other Nerf or non-Nerf blaster out there on the shelves today or ever in the past, and shoots harder by a lot. Let's check out the Adventure Force Nexus Pro and their on shells compatible half link darts. And if you don't like half link darts, don't worry. This thing still shoots full length. So let's see what this baby's got. All right, you guys. So this blaster right here is claiming it shoots over 125 feet. It is claiming it is the ultimate dart blaster. And if I'm not mistaken, they're correct on those statements. So pretty excited for this blaster out of Adventure Force and Dart Zone, of course. Now, Dart Zone previously released the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 and Mark 1.1, and that was an awesome blaster that you could buy online, but could not buy in stores, and it was also $150. Amazing blaster, but expensive. This one right here, only 50 bucks, and still shoots almost as hard. So. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at this box and then crack it open. So like I said, this shoots both full length and half length darts. It, you get 12 of each, which is pretty darn exciting. We can pop it open right here. Oh look, it's the receipt. My friend TJ picked this up for me, so thank you so much TJ, I greatly appreciate it. But that is the blaster. I really like the packaging of this. You get to see the whole blaster up there, the blaster inside. I think that's really, really cool. Check out the back real quick. We obviously got some tactical sights that we look at. We got both a full length mag and a half length mag with adapter. Really cool, really excited about that adapter. We'll talk about that more in a second, but has actual Picatinny rail on top. So you can put any of your Picatinny attachments from Airsoft or Real Steel up there so that's really cool and any m4 buffer tube should work on that stock uh, so that's pretty darn sweet let's go ahead crack this baby open all right you guys so there it is the blaster in all its glory it looks pretty darn cool in my opinion uh, I really like the design features on this, um, some of which I like actually better than the Dart Zone Pro. But anyways, we'll get on with the features and the things that come with your blaster because there's quite a few of them. We do obviously have the blaster itself. You do have a buffer tube stock that slides on and off, can be switched out with other buffer tube stocks. So that's pretty darn sweet. You get a couple iron sights here. This one, uh, not a huge fan of, just the grenade style. It doesn't really make sense to me on this blaster, but you know, you can pull those off and throw on any sort of iron sight you might want. You do have a step down Picatinny rail, so pretty sweet that it's actual Picatinny. That is just awesome in my opinion. I don't know why this hasn't been done before on blasters that are obviously for sale in stores, but hey, this is the future. This is pretty awesome. So really excited about that. Um, this guy just slides on and off, so it doesn't attach like your normal uh, Picatinny attachments, but uh, nevertheless, pretty cool. We do have a muzzle up front that can just come out. If you don't want it, you don't have to use it, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, it does have a really tight friction fit in there. We do have our foregrip AFG down here. This does come off and does have Picatinny underneath there, so you can switch that out for some other foregrip that attaches through Picatinny. So that's pretty darn awesome. You just have to remove four screws, just like the Dart Zone Pro, and you can switch that out. We do also have a mag adapter that comes with it, so this will accept 
half length mags and it doesn't just accept the mag that it comes with. It will also accept Talon mags without any issue. Katana mags without any problem. So that's pretty darn cool. But funny enough, it does not accept the original Mark 1 or Mark 1.1 Dart Zone Pro mags, which interesting. I guess they are switching this up, which is probably why the Mark 1 was kind of an experiment. I'm glad they have though. I don't find this as a big loss. I much prefer compatible magazines so you can use whatever you so choose. So that's pretty darn awesome. So obviously this also accepts full length mags, the ones it comes with, stock Nerf mags seem to work just fine. You do kind of have to slam them home a little bit, but uh, locks in there. Worker mags, that one seems to be a little tight, but I can slam it in there. Um, so compatibility with the full length mags may be a little uh, give or take. I have my favorite 22 round mags. Those seem to work a little bit better. And again, the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 or Mark 1.1 mags, no go. So pretty cool though that this is compatible with almost all your magazines. Pretty darn awesome. So I must say this grip is not as comfortable as the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 with that rubberized grip. That was just awesome, but this is still pretty darn comfortable, very large. I do like it quite a bit. So we do have a trigger lock right here. You push that way for safe and that way for fire. Mag release down here for your full length mag. And then obviously when you put your adapter in, you wanna use this one. Now, I wish they would have gone with a more low profile uh, release for the main mag, uh, just so you don't accidentally hit it when you're using half links. That would be, uh, one slight gripe I have. I wish they would have changed that out, but you know, not a huge deal. Also a nice addition they put in here is some spare O-rings in the stock that are kind of hidden and kind of, uh, kind of cool. You actually get one on each side. So that is actually for your pusher in here. It's going to be kind of hard to see right now, but you might get a good peek at that later on uh, when we go outside. But, uh, that is what that's for. So that's kind of neat. In case that falls off, you do have some spares. So another thing I've noticed is there's a little gray thing inside of the Picatinny there on top, which I believe is a priming indicator. When you prime, it kind of pops up just a little bit. And then when you fire, and by the way, you cannot deprime this blaster, uh, but when you fire, it kind of goes down a little bit. So. That is probably the catch uh, just popping up and down, be my guess of some sort, but uh, that's pretty interesting. A uh, little priming indicator there, but I don't know how useful it is really, but something to note. So basically that is all the accessories and features to the blaster that I'm aware of so far. I uh, cannot wait to take this thing outside and fire it off, but I wanna talk about the darts real quick because that is just a game changer in my opinion. So these are the darts that you receive with the blaster. Pretty darn cool. Obviously you get 12 full lengths and 12 half lengths, like I said earlier, and they are super high quality. The tip design is just the same as your Dart Zone Pro, uh, bamboo darts as we like to call them. Uh, but the bamboo part of the uh, dart is obviously different. It is just a full foam design which is interesting that they went to that, probably cheaper to, to manufacture, but very good quality foam, uh, just like the Adventure Force Waffle Foam, uh, I believe very similar to that. I do think the foam might be slightly different than the type of foam they use for the bamboo darts, but definitely pretty sweet that you can buy a hundred pack of these and probably other quantities in the future, but as of now, a hundred half-link darts right at the store. And I honestly don't know what took all the companies out there so long to make blasters shoot half link darts. It's been proven by this hobby, this community that I'm a part of, that these are the most superior darts that you can buy, especially for springers. And so pretty cool that we can finally get these and 
although they are about 10 cents a dart, so $10 for a 100 pack, a little expensive, but they are super high quality. They are gonna last a lot longer than most of the darts that you can buy from like Worker or even Jet, even though they are making better quality darts now, which is really good. Uh, but this just pushes the hobby further and it's just super easy to go grab a pack of these now and go to your local Nerf club. So that's pretty awesome. And now we also have a blaster that you can grab and go to your local Nerf club and compete now too. So that's pretty darn cool. So let's go ahead and take this thing outside and see what kind of performance it's getting. We may be able to do a range test, may outrange my range, which could be an issue, but super excited to fire this baby off. Let's do it. All right, you guys, so we'll go ahead and try their darts first in the blaster, and then we will try some other types of Adventure Force darts and Nerf darts and a whole slew of different types of darts uh, to see how well, if at all, they fire out of this blaster. But um, just wanna go over a few little features here first, things that you may be able to see a little bit better up close. Obviously, we do have a pusher mechanism here uh, that pushes the dart into the breech. We do have a metal barrel up here that I probably should have mentioned inside, but you can see it there a little bit, um, which is pretty cool that it is a metal barrel that's gonna give us optimum performance. Uh, the way the priming bar is, is a little different than what we're used to. It's a top style bar that is plastic, but um, does look pretty beefy. I mean, the uh, prime of this blaster is a definitely tougher than normal stock Nerf blasters, uh, but you need that spring load to um, be able to give you the performance this thing is gonna do, but it's not a super hard prime, definitely still doable for, you know, I would think most people 12 and up, 14 and up. I'm not sure what this is recommended for, but I would definitely recommend it for people that are serious about the hobby. Uh, this is definitely not a blaster I probably would recommend shooting inside at your friends or definitely at your parents. Uh, this is probably the blaster, if there's ever been a blaster that's for sale in stores that your parents don't want you to have. But nevertheless, we'll go ahead, shoot off some darts here and see how it's doing. We'll start out with the half links. So one thing that is a little weird is because this accepts both types of mags, you have to push it all the way in uh, when you are using this or a katana mag. So just know that there's gonna be a click there. You have to push it all the way up. And that is a little weird. It's pretty stiff. Um, wish it wasn't quite as stiff so it'd go all the way up, but uh, you know, not horrible. Definitely really cool that this thing does accept all types of mags, but something to note. So I could see you inserting your mag only to there and thinking you're ready to go, but you actually have to push it all the way up. So here we go. Hmm, 82, not great there. Try again. There we go, that was better, 149. 145. 146, just took one shot to break it in. 148. Ah, another 82. 154. 151. 149. 148. 153. 150. And we're out. Go ahead and try some full lengths now. 135. 138. 140. 140. 140, 141, 141, 139, 
144, and we're out. So pretty darn impressive, easy 140 with full lengths, right at 150 with the half lengths, pretty impressive. There was a few low shots there with the half lengths, I'm not sure why that was, uh, but more or less 150 with, uh, with the darts that shot well, but we'll go ahead and try some other types of darts. I got a bunch of half length darts here. We got the original Dart Zone Pro darts, we got Worker Gen 3s, we have the new Jet Blaster darts, and then we have some Adventure Force waffles to see if those work. And then in here, we have, I believe, five full length Dart Zone Pro darts. Then we have some genuine Nerf Elite darts. Then I believe I have some uh, AccuStrike darts. Uh, we also have some Adventure Force waffles in here. So we will see how well those do. So nice I don't have to bring out another adapter for this blaster. Here we go. 153. 147, so pretty similar. 153. Now we'll try some Worker Gen 3s. 142, so a little less. 99. That one I felt feed a little funny, so I'm not sure that was a great dart. 174, it probably got stuck in the barrel a little bit. 170, 74, not 174, but uh, that didn't seem quite right to me. I could tell that just by feeling it push into the breech there. Now we got some jet darts. 137. 114. 135. Now, Adventure Force Waffles, the moment of truth. Will these work? They do work. 117, not great, but they do fire. 154, oh wow, that was pretty good. 119, so actually you're firing more consistently, more darts than my Darts on Pro Mark I and Mark 1.1. Uh, definitely more consistently than the Mark I. So they must have changed some things about the seal. I'm curious if I can figure out if this does have a, how good the seal is. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to plug that or not, but we will try. So I don't think I had a complete plug, but I could feel that pusher or the plunger uh, push forward slowly, somewhat slowly anyways. I just, it's just, the barrel is just not quite long enough to get a good plug on it. Yeah. But uh, I feel like the seal is a little bit better stock, so that's uh, pretty good. Uh, it is basically a full seal breech, or it does definitely act that way. So we'll go ahead and try some of the full length darts. 142 with the bamboo dart, another bamboo. 138. 137. 120. 141, now we have elite darts. Whoa, well, that flew horribly, but what's new, you know, horrible Nerf elite darts. 120 though. Ah, yeah, that's just too much power for those darts. 131, hopefully you guys can see how those are flying. Yeah, well, that hit the tree, went, whoosh, hit the tree, 113. Uh, now we have the AccuStrike darts. We'll see how those do. Oh, not great. 74. Huh, weird. Uh, 105. So those aren't doing real well. I think these are the Adventure Force Waffles. A little slow out of the barrel. They do stick a little bit. 121. That one's a little better. 124. 116. All right, so I did start the tape measure at 25 feet, so we could get the full 125, which is about the max I have on the range here. So we'll see how many actually went past that. Uh, we obviously had some short ones here uh, that didn't fire super well. One of the workers 
uh, which I don't remember. Oh yeah, that worker seemed to jam up a little bit, I think, if I remember correctly. And then those two 80 FPS shots, which I'm not sure what happened with those. But uh, those were, you know, pretty bad. But I'm not going to count those. This is one of the Adventure Force half-link darts. Um, but here we go with some of the full links. Uh, they are not doing super well, to be honest. That was only, well, 25 plus 33 feet. So you guys get to do the math. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, here we go. So this is uh, 37 feet with a worker. 37 plus 25. We have another Elite, uh, 41 feet. So, you know, plus the 25. Don't forget to add the 25. So these are pretty good ranges. You know, not bad at all. Uh, 47. 53. So, you know, over 75 feet there. Pretty good. Uh, then we do have a full length Dart Zone, Pro, Dart Zone Pro bamboo dart, mouthful there. Um, that was at 54 and a half, so pretty good there. We have a pretty good grouping here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six darts. You can see the variety there. A couple jet darts, uh, three bamboo full lengths, and one of their half length darts at 60. So, you know, pretty good performance there, 85 feet. A few more right here, you know, in that. 90 foot range, I would say. A jet dart, one of their full link darts, another one of their full link darts, another one of their full link darts, one of their bamboo darts, another one of their full link darts. So that's pretty good performance. Uh, bamboo half length here. Interesting that uh, these didn't go further than they did, um, but they aren't brand new, so that might be part of it. Uh, I just found what I found inside. I just grabbed what I found inside, I should say. Another full length, another half length, 69. Um, we got a bunch more here at that 71 foot range. Um, real close to 100 foot ranges right here, so that's pretty good. A few more half length darts, bamboo there. One of their full lengths, another one of their full lengths. So pretty darn good. And you can see that this is a pretty accurate blaster as well. If you add a scar to it, which is gonna be a little difficult, I think we'll have to lengthen that, that uh, metal barrel a little bit to do so, but um, that actually could add some performance also uh, if we have a little longer barrel. Uh, but, I mean, you can't really complain with 150. Uh, another full length there at 81. One of the worker darts at 85. Another full length over here. So as you can see, they're getting really good ranges. And if you did angled shots, oh, this one, well, this one did hit 125 feet right there. So there you go. This one went past 125 feet. So they're not lying that they can shoot over 125 feet. I'm sure I lost some of those half length darts probably out there somewhere. Um, I don't think I found them all. Now, <laughs> one complaint I do have is black was probably a poor choice. Uh, you're gonna lose this a lot outside. Black is probably the hardest color to see in the grass. Uh, I have experience, you know, obviously picking up lots and lots of darts at the Naptown Nerf Club and black darts are always the ones that get lost first. So uh, expect to lose these a little more often than others, but uh, still really, really cool darts, especially the half link darts, pretty darn awesome. So let's go back inside and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts, but I'm gonna play with that blaster a little bit more first. Wow, guys, this thing is the best blaster we've ever seen on shells, no question. No question. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Dart Zone for improving on the Dart Zone Pro Mark I in so many ways and then making it a third the price. I mean, that's just incredible. I know people are probably going to say, oh, it's not the quality of the Dart Zone Pro. Um, it's really good quality. It may not have all the metal parts that the Dart Zone Pro does, but the plastic quality is still very, very solid, very thick, uh, very secure. It does not wiggle. It's very strong. I'm very impressed by it. Uh, the priming bar obviously is plastic. That being metal would be nice. Then we could probably increase the spring load a little bit more, but I think we're gonna say that these blasters are mostly meant to stay 
in stock form. They're supposed to be bought and used right off the shelf. Like that is the whole point of this. Um, it is nice to be able to tinker and make your blasters better. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try to do that, but no matter what blaster you're buying, you're going to stress things out. And that's why we put metal parts into Nerf blasters and things like that and all kinds of stuff, obviously. So if these things become successful enough, we'll have parts like that for these blasters as well if you want to take it to the next level. Uh, that being said, this thing being able to be compatible with pretty much all types of darts, even more so than the Mark 1 and the Mark 1.1, I think that's awesome. I think it may have a little bit to do with the barrel length, but the seal is so much better with this blaster than it is with the Mark 1. I. I mean, it's just really, really close to being 100% perfect. It's really hard to test that because of the barrel being back in the blaster a little bit, but I've tested it and it is near perfect. Um, so very cool there. Um, they also solved the opening of the blaster for the most part. There is still two tabs here, but I don't think there's any other tabs on the blaster. I have not opened this completely, so don't quote me on that, but it does seem like it's going to be a lot easier. And this back part, we don't have to mess with that. That was one of the big struggles of getting the Dart Zone Pro Mark I apart. Uh, this actually, you can just unscrew one screw right here, twist, and there comes your spring. So if we want to change out the spring, very easy to do so. Seems like they may have spring upgrades maybe in the future. I mean, that's just really cool. They did the same similar thing, I guess, with the Mark I where you can uh, easily get the spring out and put another one in. So that's really cool. Obviously, the compatibility with stocks is just awesome. I mean, that's just sweet that you can put whatever stock you want on there. The next thing that is just blows my mind is this guy right here. I mean, making this compatible with third-party Nerf magazines, that is awesome. And then changing the design of their magazine to do so and their adapter. That is just really, really cool in my opinion. Uh, that costs money, a lot of money, I'm sure, to change that design. Uh, but I think it was an awesome choice. Now, this guy will also work in something like this without any problem. And I even have third-party Nerf adapters that have trouble in the long shot because of its old design. So that's really, really cool. Also, this will now work in other Nerf blasters. I don't know if they'll work in 100% Nerf blasters, but it does seem like they will. I mean, that is really cool. And that is not the case for the Mark I magazine. So if you are looking at buying more Dart Zone Pro mags, do not buy the mags that are online at this current moment. They may be changing those, I'm hoping. Maybe they need to let people know the difference between the two types of magazines, but those magazines will not work in the Nexus Pro. So just know that uh, I would recommend buying Worker Talons uh, until they come out with more of their Adventure Force Pro mags. So uh, hopefully we can get some 15 round mags because I did prefer the 15 rounds to the 12, but other than that, these are just awesome. Now let's talk about the darts. And being able to buy darts separate, half length from full length, I think is just amazing. And then to be able to buy them in the store, are you kidding me? I mean, we've been waiting for this moment for so, so long. I don't know why it's taken so long for dart companies like Dart Zone or <coughs> Nerf, uh, they probably will never figure this out, uh, to get that this is the most superior Nerf dart out there. I mean, until somebody creates a completely different type of dart, which won't work in really anything that we have designed for the last decades, uh, you know, this is just super, super awesome. And I'm just super stoked to see where this hobby can go from here, where this line is gonna go from here. I just think it's really awesome. And I also wanna give a huge shout out to my man, Scott, for sending me a whole pack of these. Uh, he was the first one to find these on shelves. He immediately uh, asked me if I would like a pack and sent one my way. But 
Little did we know that they would be on shelves lots of places and a lot of people would get their hands on them. Uh, but I greatly appreciate it. So thank you so much. If you guys want to see a specific dart review video, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, also, go ahead and smash that like button while you're at it on this video. And that will let me know that you really want to see more content about this blaster and the ammunition that comes with it. So uh, these are really, really cool. And I just think that it's awesome that we can get these on shelves now and for a pretty reasonable price. Now, if there are any cons at all with this blaster, which there really aren't any huge cons, so let me be clear on that. Uh, one thing that I know some people won't like is the fact that this goes back like this, similar to the Mark I and the Mark 1.1 uh, before actually engaging the spring. And I'm gonna let you know right now, that is necessary to be able to chamber half-length and full-length darts. This one does it differently than the Mark I, the Mark I actually had a moving plunger, uh, which was kind of cool and different. This actually has a pusher mechanism that is telescoping. So that is really cool. So it actually telescopes inside of the another pusher part here that's a little bit bigger and it has an O-ring on it and then engages the plunger and the plunger rod. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So the other thing that I think may I mean, it's really gonna only affect people that are really tall is the fact that this is a little bit shorter. Um, the stock length isn't at quite as long, but very, very small amount uh, shorter, obviously, than the Mark I, uh, but it is a little bit shorter. I think it's perfect for me, uh, you know, pretty good. Actually, the funny thing is this one actually ends up being just a hair shorter than the one that comes with the blaster, but nevertheless, I don't mind that too much. The blaster is a little bit shorter than the other blaster. So it's just a little bit smaller, which actually, in my opinion, is a plus. And it's quite a bit lighter because of the lack of metal parts and um, more things internally in the blaster. This just has fewer parts overall. So uh, really, really cool. I think the lightness of the blaster actually is a plus to me. Uh, but other than that, I don't really see too many negatives with this blaster. There's so many things actually that are so much better about this blaster than the Mark I, one of which is the fact that we don't have those pins anymore. I think that was a major, major plus, and I wanna give a huge shout out to Darzone for getting rid of those, because I don't think that was really necessary at all. So yeah, awesome stuff. I mean, there's so much I could talk and ramble about about this blaster, but one other thing I wanna point out real quick that I found out is we can remove this, of course, and a worker scar will actually fit in there. It is pretty darn tight, so if you get it in there too far, it may be tough to get out. Uh, also, if you want to eliminate the dead space, just turn it around, so that's an option. It's not gonna be a perfect solution because obviously it's gonna have a better seal if it goes actually onto the barrel itself, but it is still pretty cool, and I think it still is gonna work really well. I haven't been able to test it as much as I'd like because it's been raining a lot here lately uh, since I did the initial part of this video that you saw earlier, but still I think is a good solution if you wanna put a scar on your blaster and uh, pretty easy. So that's pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. I, I'm over excited about this and cannot wait to see what else is coming out in the line for both the Dart Zone Pro line and the Adventure Force Pro line. I'm not real sure where that's going, uh, but nevertheless, I think it's really cool. Maybe we'll get some flywheel blasters out of the deal, and I don't know what they're going to do with that to make them pro, but uh, pretty excited to see what may happen. Uh, would be really cool if this takes off. I could see just half-length mag-only blasters on shelves. That would be crazy. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I'm really hopeful that this is successful. I can't imagine that it's not going to be successful. Uh, the only thing that I can see being a downside is kids buying this not knowing how powerful it is and then shooting somebody in the face uh, at close range. So no, if you're watching this video, this is not to be played with. This is something very serious. You want to wear eye protection. And if I was to recommend Adventure Force Dart Zone, I would recommend selling iPro with your blasters or making it very clear that you should wear that on the box because 
kids aren't used to things like this. I mean, this is just next level and super awesome, but I just want it to be received well and I could see parents maybe being a little upset if they're being shot at 150 FPS at point blank range. That could be a problem, but uh, other than that, I think it's really, really awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Smash that like button. Please subscribe. Wear your mask, stay safe, be kind to one another, and as always, peace out.